Uh, I have Sal Khan with me here today. Sal is the founder of Khan Academy. Sal, thank you so much for being at Open Forum. Uh, Thanks for having me. I'm glad that you were able to make time for us. How do you like the forum in general? Oh, you know, I've, I've been connected with the Open community for a while, so I'm always super impressed by it. So, so far, it's just a very impressive uh, conference. We are, we are very glad to have you here at the conference. Now, I, now I know, Sal, you are revolutionizing the, uh, the educational sector by uh, introducing a new method or a new model to measure uh, performance and productivity in, in, uh, in within Khan Academy. Can you tell us how Khan Academy model is different from the traditional uh, educational model that exists today? Yeah, you know, in some ways, I, I, I think Khan Academy is using technology to, to actually take us back to an older model, right? An older model was if you were a prince 500 years ago, you would have an army of private tutors who would be able to personalize the education to you. If you didn't learn something, they would slow down and make sure you learn the material because you're going to be king one day. And they would do that. Then 200 years ago, we had mass public education. We had to make a compromise. You couldn't afford everyone to get a personal tutor. So you put 30 kids in a classroom. And the only way you can really do that is a teacher uh, delivers the content at the same pace, at the same time for everyone. After a few weeks, you take a test. Some kids get it. Some kids don't. Too bad. You then move on to the next concept and those kids who didn't get the first concept now you expect them to get the second concept and in, especially in math and science that's pretty much setting themselves setting them up for failure so our whole principle at Khan Academy which is a very old one which predates Khan Academy is mastery learning it's the way you would learn a piano or it's the way that you would learn a sport is if you're not if you haven't mastered something it you still can keep working on it you could move on if you want but you can also revisit and keep working on it so what we're trying to do if you think about it is try to get back a little bit to that person Personalization, what a good tutor would do, but doing it in a way that scales. Yeah, and considering the fact that you give the students the time to learn, it's not compact into like you have to do it within one quarter. Yeah. Students, as long as they're getting the concepts, they're understanding the methodology, they can take their own time as they progress within your courses. How do you measure productivity within these students as compared to traditional colleges? And what is the traditional timeline for the students to graduate from one class to another? You know, it's interesting. So in the United States, it actually turns out that the test scores show that students gain about 0.7 grade levels per year of learning. So they don't even get a full grade level. And that turns out because when kids graduate from high school, they're actually operating at about a middle school level, right? So that 0.7 just accumulates. And I think that's because of lack of mastery learning. We just had a study come out with 200,000 kids in urban school districts in the United States that if they're able to do Khan Academy personalization for even 30 minutes a week, 18 hours, over the whole school year, so not a lot per week, not per, per day, these kids are getting 1.2, 1.3 grade levels of learning. That's just over 30 to 60 minutes a week. At our lab school, we have a Khan lab school that's out here in Silicon Valley. It's pretty typical for our students to see one and a half to two grade levels a year. And once again, we're not pushing them, we're just making sure they have strong foundations, they have their peers, they have the faculty there to support them. But, it, you know, and when, if you're learning 1.2, 1.5, 2x typical velocity, uh, it's, it's not unusual to see kids in middle school doing calculus or early high school. And once again, it's not that we're pushing them, we're not trying to be tiger parents, tiger right. teachers. We're tr it, it's just natural for a human if you have a strong foundation you can learn this stuff faster uh -huh. and then it also frees up the students so that normally high school is really stressful uh -huh. these kids are more relaxed Got it. okay so based on that assumption as students are graduating and again your model is not the traditional model uh, that exists today where do you see the future of education like in five years from today and how are universities and other local institutions adopting to your model in five years you're going to have a world where you know, there's there's two types of models. There's a competency model and a seat time model. Seat time is what we're familiar with. You sit in a classroom, you get some credit hours, say in university. Competency means yeah, if you know the material, take an assessment and you get credit for it. So I think you're going to see more and more movement towards competency-based credentials, including college credentials, including college degrees. And one of the things we're working towards with other partners is let's create a world where anyone on the planet can learn at their own time and pace through Khan Academy and maybe other things 
students. And once they know material, they can prove it. They get college credit, college degrees, apprenticeships, and not just apprenticeships to become a plumber or electrician, those are important too, but apprenticeship to become a software engineer, to become a, a project manager, to become an accountant, and maybe give diplomas on that. So it sounds like science fiction today, but I think in the next five years, it's actually going to be a very mainstream thing. Okay, thank you so much for that. We're gonna do a small segment of what Sal likes. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask you three really quick questions. Uh, chai or coffee? Chai, but I'm caffeine sensitive, caffeine so decaf if I... Decaf, yeah, okay. I then um, burgers or kati roll? Kati roll. Kati roll. Karachi or Silicon Valley? Karachi or Silicon Valley? I mean, my, my, my wife was born in Karachi, so I'll, I'll say Karachi for her. Okay. Thank you so much, Sal, for being here today with us. It's been a truly uh, an honor to have you here, and it's a pleasure, and we'll look forward to having you in years to come. Thanks for having Thank me. You. Thank you.